Luke. And actually, I would like to say that the that the um, piston is is almost friction free. I mean, you usually try to make pistons so that you you use grease or oil or something so they slide easily, so friction is not a big deal. Time's up, by the way. Um, whoops. So the the bond energy, uh, sorry, the thermal energy here didn't really increase because there's friction, although whatever friction did cause some of the increase in thermal energy. But mostly it increased because uh, something was pushing on the gas and, and did work on it. Gravitational potential energy got transferred to thermal energy in the gas. As long as that's an insulated as long as I can use a closed system, then I could say that gravitational potential energy went down because the height went down. Thermal energy went up because the temperature went up. Well, yeah, the temperature went up, but I didn't tell you anything about that. The reason I want you to say that is because energy is conserved and something had to go up. And the thing that went up is not the kinetic energy of the mass or the gravitational potential energy of the mass, if it's N2 gas at the beginning and at the end, then it's not bond energy changes. And so the only thing left is thermal energy. I'll put that the temperature went up because it did. You can make the temperature of a gas go up by compressing it. Anyone who's pumped up a bicycle by hand knows that in the end, the bicycle pump is hotter than it was at the beginning. You, by compressing the air, you do work on it. You add work energy to it. And in compressing the air in this problem, the same thing was true. We added energy, it's not the air, it's N2, which is nearly air. We added energy to the N2. And it is now hotter. Higher temperature, more thermal energy than it had. By the way, if I took the mass off again and it came back up, the gravitational potential energy would have come back up and, and the air would have been the thing that pushed the thing up in the air. So the air would have lost that energy again. Okay, I, with two masses it's not going to work very well. I, if I add mass one at a time really slowly and make it go down really slowly and then I take the masses off again one at a time really slowly and have it reverse the process exactly, then the thermal energy will all come back and, sorry, will all go, yeah, we'll all come back. The gravitational potential energy will all come back and the temperature will go back to the beginning as long as there's no friction. As long as there's no friction, when uh, whatever I do, I can reverse it and bring the temperature back again. Well, you are going to practice I mean, I'm, I'm sure you've seen graphs of potential energy. We're going to spend a lot of time making sense of graphs of potential energy so that when you see them in the future, it will be perfectly obvious how to think about them. And so this is just a start of, of how you might think about graphs. This is, okay, even I almost can't see these numbers here. These are potential energies on the vertical scale here and on the horizontal scale is height or y. It's a y variable. <laughs> could call it height. Height y. And zero is sitting here in the center. I'm not sure why I put, well I think I know why I put zero in the center, but zero in the center here so positive numbers are to the right and negative numbers are, are to the left on that scale. Uh, which is the best graph of pot gravitational potential energy versus height? And height here, instead of H, I've used Y for the height. And I said I think that I was going to do that sometimes. So talk about it all you want. What's the best one? <laughs> 